Hello there. This is part 2 of me dissecting Help Wanted 2. Last part, I covered the identity of our player, why he's here, and his connection to Glitch Trap. So if you haven't watched part 1, I highly recommend you do. Anyways, this video is gonna be all about Princess Quest. So first things first, since we see that Glitch Trap is still alive in Help Wanted 2, did the Princess Quest ending in Security Breach even happen? After Ruin, it seemed pretty obvious that it did. The short answer, still yes. Long answer, the reason being is that Glitch Trap is severely weakened in Help Wanted 2, and we also have access to Princess Quest 4, and if we had to access Princess Quest 3 by beating the previous two, I would think that we had to beat the third one to access the fourth. Even in the beginning of Princess Quest 4, the red old man tells the princess that she won, and she remains. So she was victorious in Princess Quest 3. I think when Gregory beat Princess Quest 3, Glistrap was mostly cut off from the Pizza Plexus systems. But then, why is the sword in the third cabinet if the princess still has it in Princess Quest 4? My guess is that this isn't actually the princess's sword, but just a memory about her beating Glitchtrap. A lot of the time when we wear the mask in Ruin, we often hear or see memories of the past. Like how we hear the voice lines of the animatronics from the base game, we see the note from Cassie's dad, the missing Gregory poster, and the daycare loft being clean and repaired. So the sword being in the cabinet could just be a memory and not the actual sword. What's also interesting is that the Princess Quest 4 arcade is housed in a room with an inhibitor, the Vanny poster, and a Captain Foxy poster. The poster is interesting, since it's the same poster that hides the door to the daycare loft, which has the Balloon World arcade, and also the arcade conspiracy note. I think the poster being there might have big implications, especially if the mask can sometimes show us the user's memories. The arcade conspirator was someone that was obsessed with the Princess Quest machines. He played the first two games, but he couldn't play the third. The last message we have from the conspirator is him being fired. Exit interview. They're all working together. The arcades. They are hiding something. The glitches. Glitch them all at the same time. Then the princess will recognize me. She's testing me. I am not yet worthy. The others are protecting it. Let me stay. I am so close. Just one more night. Please. I can save the princess. So the same Captain Foxy poster from the Fazbear Theater could hint that the arcade conspirator is Cassie's dad. But there are problems with this. The arcade conspirator was fired. While Cassie's dad is still implied to be an employee by Cassie and Fazbear Entertainment since he was presumably sent by them to test out the VR training simulator. Also, him being the conspirator doesn't really tie in with Candy Cadet's story. Cassie's dad most likely wants revenge against Glitchtrap. He doesn't really obsess over saving the princess. Also, why would the arcade conspirator have a message of him being fired with him in the loft? This was clearly a record of his firing, so why would he have it? Unless someone else investigated the arcade conspirator and found out he got fired by pulling out records of his firing. This person kept the messages in the loft because he wanted to follow the conspirator's footsteps and instructions. What if Cassie's dad actually found the records and decided to finish what the arcade conspirator started? Maybe one of the arcades that Cassie's dad glitched out possibly freed Gregory from Glitchtrap's control and started security breach. Maybe he tried to glitch out Balloon World as well. But maybe he didn't have time, since we can glitch out the arcade ourselves. Unlike the others that were a part of the arcade conspiracy, like Gator Golf and Chica's Feeding Frenzy. 
they are all normal because presumably Cassie's dad probably glitched them out already. That's possibly what made him so special. He knew Glitch Trap when he worked on the VR game and he almost glitched out all of the arcade games and was noticed by Vanny. Alright, now let's discuss what Vanny is doing here if the Princess Quest ending of Security Breach is the real ending. Isn't Vanessa supposed to be released from Glitch Trap's control? One explanation I can think of is maybe Vanessa is still linked with Princess Quest to some degree. Maybe she used her Vanny persona to trick Glitch Trap into trusting her so she can kill him once and for all. I mean, Glitch Trap himself gives us his memories to access Vanny, so he at least somewhat trusts what our player is doing. But what's the deal with the memories? They have the masks of the original six kids that Afton killed decades before. How would Glitchtrap have those memories? Some people figured that Glitchtrap is actually William instead of an AI, because why would the Mimic have those memories and the death of Charlotte if she wasn't even inside Freddy's? Well, I do have an explanation. In the Phaser Blast level, FNAF 2, we see the FNAF 2 8-bit minigames are here, meaning that the minigames themselves are canon in-universe as well, probably as a part of the FNAF 2 in-universe game. And one of the minigames it shows is Give Cake to the Children, meaning Charlie's death could have been learned by an AI along with the other five kids. But I think to help us understand the memories more, I think we could use the unused content from the game. But I do want to note that when I use cut content, I always take it with a grain of salt, since it was cut for a reason. So supposedly, Vanny was supposed to talk to us through Hellpoint 2 and guide us to get the Princess Quest 4 ending, but it was removed and supposedly replaced with Mystic Hippo hinting the player where the graffiti is. When Vanny is talking about the memories, she tells us we have to free the memories. Then when we light up the graves, I think Vanny tells us that the memories are freed. So the memories of the dead kids somewhat powers Glitch Trap. So when we free them, Glitch Trap is supposedly weaker. Maybe that's why Glitch Trap is so small and weak compared to Vanny. And the specific order you light these graves could represent the kids being freed like we see in Happiest Day, and the Stitch Wraith Stingers. The last thing I want to talk about is the Princess and the Red Old Man. In the files of Hellpont 2, we see that the Red Old Man is named Old Man Consequences, and previously in Security Breach, the Princess herself was named Cassidy, until Steel World changed it back to just Princess. So what does this mean? Is the Princess and the Red Old Man actually Cassidy and Old Man Consequences? Last time we saw Old Man Consequences was in UCN, where he told the Vengeful Spirit to move on. Who the Vengeful Spirit is, is a topic for another day. Last time we saw Cassidy is when her and the other four kids were trapped in Molten Freddy, until later burned. So my question is, well, how did these two go inside the Princess Quest arcades in the first place. Cassidy is supposed to be freed with the other kids, while Old Man Consequences is an entity that resides between the real world and the spirit world. I'll be honest, I personally don't think the Princess and the Red Old Man are Cassidy and Old Man Consequences, or at least their actual spirits. Realistically, there would be no reason to bring them back. Even if Cassidy is the Vengeful Spirit, the Vengeful Spirit wants Afton alive, while the Princess wants him dead. Also, Old Man Consequences tells the Vengeful Spirit to rest, while the Red Old Man encourages the Princess to go kill Glitchtrap. He even gives us the sword, and there is nothing that references Old Man Consequences' fishing hobbies. Old Man Consequences is also an unknown creature while the Red Old Man is a human. Even if both of them changed their minds and now want Afton dead, Glitchtrap is most likely not even Afton in the first place. There's also the fact that the Princess is still named Princess in the Help Wanted 2 files, 
not Cassidy. If Steele wanted us to know if the princess is Cassidy, then they would have shown it, and not retroactively change it back to princess. Furthermore, the princess herself is not even a sentient being. We are always controlling her. The princess doesn't do anything unless we take control. What would be the point of Cassidy being there if she does nothing and someone else has to control her to do everything? Even when we become the princess, we can use the sword to kill the princess herself. And lastly, there is the fact that Cassidy is most likely free because of what we see with the graves. The six kids are all supposed to be freed after FNAF 6 and after Frights. I think it was pretty obvious enough when we saw their graves under a peaceful morning. So yeah, the princess being Cassidy is very unlikely now. Princess Quest as a whole is all about freeing Vanessa from Glitchtrap's control. While the princess herself is most likely not actually Vanessa, and the Red Old Man could be just a representation of Old Man Consequences, rather than actually being him. They're all just AI, like possibly Glistrap, made as a result of Vanessa's corruption. And after killing him, there is no more threats in Princess Quest, completely freeing Vanessa's mind. So yeah, that's my rant on the princess being Cassidy and stuff like that. So. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, all that jazz, and be sure to stick around for part 3, where I talk about the endings. So, yeah. See you on the flip side.